This is a falcon. This is an owl. This is a buzzard. This is an eagle. This is also a falcon. This is also an owl. This is a Harris hawk, but it's actually a buzzard. Now when discussing what should be your first bird of prey, I have to talk about the elephant in the room. And by elephant, I mean Harris hawk. So many falconers and people label these birds as a beginner bird, and I hate the term. There is no such thing as a beginner bird. But in this video, I'm going to go through some points that will hopefully allow you to choose what should be your first bird of prey. There is a huge range of birds of prey available here in the UK, and picking the right species depends entirely on what you want to achieve with your bird of prey. Some people like to have birds to hunt, some people just for fun, others for work. And flying a buzzard is completely different to flying a falcon. Each species of bird of prey has their own unique style of flying. While the falcons gain a load of height and then fold their wings away to do a stupid enormous speeds, the owls are low down, slow and graceful. The true hawks dart in and out of dense woodlands. The buzzards and eagles are a soaring and gliding species, so they get up in the air and go slowly. And the flying styles of each of these birds is affected by the shape of them. But to understand how the shape of a bird affects its flying style, we have to look at the forces that act upon birds whilst they're in flight. When a bird flaps its wings, the flapping isn't what makes it go up. The flapping gives them thrust that pushes them forwards. The force acting against the flapping is drag or friction. As the bird opens up its wings, the air that passes over and under has friction with the wing, and that slows the bird down, acting against the thrust that they're using to push forwards. Now the shape of the wing is what makes the bird go up. It's called an airfoil shape, and it allows the air to travel over the top faster than underneath. Faster moving air has less pressure, and slower moving air has more pressure. So that differential of pressure is what pushes the bird up, giving them lift. And the force acting against the lift is the gravity, or the bird's own weight. In order to fly, the bird's thrust and the bird's lift needs to be higher than the forces that are acting against it. But how does that all relate back to the different flying styles of different birds of prey? In falconry, birds of prey are classified by the shape of their wing. Falcons are long wings, buzzards are broad wings, and the true hawks are short wings. Falcons are all about speed. The moving air causes drag and friction, and because the falcons are all about speed, they've got a very thin wing to reduce that drag. But because they have a very thin wing, it needs to be very long with a very small point on the end to still be able to generate lift. Buzzards are a soaring and gliding species, meaning they have a really broad wing that allows them to generate lots of lift and get high up into the air. But having a broad wing means they also have a lot of drag or friction, so that slows them down. So while they can get nice and high, they're quite slow flyers. The true hawks are agile and use sudden bursts of speeds. They've got short, rounded edges to their wings. The rounded edges means that they can dart in and out of all the bushes and not whack their wings on the trees and branches and trunks. And the fact that they've got really short wings means that they can beat them really fast to generate lots of thrust for quick sudden bursts of energy. It's important to understand the different flying styles of birds of prey because this will affect which species will work better for your independent situation. If you don't already have land to fly on, or permission as it's called in falconry, then you need to find some. If you do have permission, then what this looks like will affect the kinds of birds that you can fly. Whether it's wide open fields, or dense woodland, or even a mix in between, what your permission looks like will affect the type of bird that you can fly. For example, if your permission is covered by dense woodland, there is no way that you can train and fly a falcon. Once you've worked out what species of bird of prey is acceptable for your permission, you need to think about why you are having a bird of prey. Now straight off the bat, I'm gonna say that eagles are probably not the best idea for your first bird. Unless your specific situation, you have lots of experience with eagles and you have lots of close friends who have experience and own eagles, then leave the eagles to more experienced people. If you want to hunt with your bird, as a first bird, you should probably stay away from the owls. The owls have got a very specific hunting style and they come with their own challenges that are probably best left to experienced hunting falconers. 
If you just want a bird of prey for fun and you're not going to hunt with it, then probably stay away from the true hawks. They've got incredibly high prey drive and they're probably best left to somebody who will allow them to use that. If you're going to be hunting with your bird, then the available quarry will also affect the decision that you make on what you should have. Different birds are suited to different prey. If your permission has lots of rabbit and larger game birds, such as pheasants, then the buzzards and the hawks are a good fit. If your permission has corvids or smaller game birds like partridge or grouse, then the falcons are a good fit. And there are two different styles of hunting. There is game hawking and pursuit. Game hawking relies on having your bird gain a load of height and then wait on whilst you flush the prey out. Once the prey is out, the bird that's already in the air will go down and make the kill. Pursuit falconry is very different. The bird is typically held on the glove with the hood and once the prey is either flushed out or already up in the air, the hood is removed and the bird is released to go and chase down the prey. I also briefly want to mention the size of the bird. Many people think that they should be getting a smaller bird to start off with because they think they're easier and that's not the truth. Falconry is all based around weight management and the smaller bird, the less margin for error you have. So if you're not confident or experienced in managing the weight of a bird, you probably shouldn't have a very small bird. But I will go into all of that in a lot more information and detail in a different video that I'm going to be making all about weight management. And all of this brings me back to the Harris Hawk here. Now the Harris Hawk is quite a unique species in several different ways. Whilst they are technically a buzzard, they do have very broad wings and a very fanned out tail, so they can get up in the air and soar around. But for a buzzard, they do also have very rounded edges to their wings and a very long tail, meaning they're really agile in and out of dense woodland. So they're a very versatile bird. Another weird thing about the Harris Hawks is that they're a social species in the wild. And so it's a lot easier to build that hawk falconer relationship with an animal that is naturally social rather than an animal that wants to be solitary all of the time. And again, because they are social, it means you can fly them in a cast or in a larger group and have a lot of fun with them. And all of these reasons put together is probably why so many falconers label these as a beginner bird. But I really feel like this is a disservice to this amazing species here. If you want a Harris Hawk, go out and get a Harris Hawk. You'll have a lot of fun with one. But if you're getting a Harris Hawk just because you've been told that they're a beginner bird or that that's a bird that you should start with, then just don't do it. So many people get Harris Hawks and then subconsciously they limit their own bird by only ever seeing it as a beginner bird. And these can be incredible birds here. And then what happens is that people, because they think they're a beginner bird, they end up getting bored and that's when they go out and get the bird that they actually wanted. And then that poor Harris Hawk gets ignored. It's not always easy to choose the right first bird for you, but hopefully some of the points that I've raised in this video will give you a better understanding on how to pick your first bird. So that hopefully you can have a long and happy and exciting full life with your first bird. If you have enjoyed this video, then please leave a comment below and like it, make sure to subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.